with us today on Istimela Sendaba. Yes, Istimela Sendaba literally means the story train. Yes, friends, and I will be your host for today. My name is Chulufelo. And my name is Nongi. And we will be with you for today with our storyteller on our storytelling train. So now, friends, before we get into our story, we are just going to talk about a few house rules. The first rule is that I'm going to ask everyone to mute their microphone. Yes, friends, even if we ask you questions, just mute your microphone and type in the chat. If there's something you want to say or something you want to ask, just put it in the chat and then we will respond right after the story. Yes, friends, that's just to help us so that we don't have lots of commotion and too many voices, and then we're not sure who we're listening to. The second rule, friends, is that we must use our imagination. Yes, friends, some of us, some of us haven't been going to work, haven't been going to school, and things are still a little jumbled up. So we're going to need you to pretend that all your loved ones are in the room with you. Yes, friends, please look to your left. Everybody to the left. Look to your left. And I want you to imagine that all your school friends are with you today to watch the story. Yes, and now look to your right. And on the right, just imagine all your church friends or friends you go to soccer club or cricket club or netball club or any other club you're part of. Yes, friends, let's imagine that all our loved ones and all our friends are watching this wonderful story with us. Yes, and today we will be having Captain Busisiwe Khadebe, and she will be taking us on a very, very special journey. We are going to go to a far, far, far away place, but not far away as in like distance far away, but far away as in long, 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 long ago, where they didn't have electricity or fancy phones or all the stuff we are using to communicate today. Yes, friends, 
we are going on a very special journey to a very, very special time to hear about a very, very special girl. Do you know what her name is, Nongi? Yes! Her name is Musidi. Musitana. Musidi is a girl child. I can't wait to hear the story. Yes, friends, we can't wait to hear the story. But first, I'd like to teach you our song about the story train. As we sing it, we would like you to try and remember it and sing along with us. So that by the end of this 11 days, we've got our own special story train song that we all know together. Can we start? I'll count us down. One, two, one, two, three. Banaba Afrika, Banaba Afrika, Tangli Uten, Tangli Uten, Utwa Treniata, Utwa Treniata, it's very deepal, deepal is the Munati. Banaba Afrika, Banaba Afrika, it's Tangli Uten, it's Tangli Uten. Utwa treniata, utwa treniata, it's very deepal, deepal it's a monati. So what our song means, friends, is that all our friends from Africa come and hear with us. Come hear that the train is coming and the train has got lots and wonderful stories for us to listen to. Can we sing it one more time, one more time before we ask Ospusi to come and tell us the story? Do you want to hear it one more time, friends? Yes, yes, please, let's sing it one more time. I'll count us down. One, two, one, two, three. Banaba Afrika, Banaba Afrika. Kangli Uteng, Kangli Uteng. Uta Triniata, Uta Triniata. It's very divine, divine, it's a monarchy. Banaba Afrika, Banaba Afrika. It's Kangli Uteng, it's Kangli Uteng. Uta Triniata, Uta Triniata, it's very divine, divine, it's a Africa. Choo choo, choo choo, choo choo. Osbusi, are you ready to tell us the story? Come, Osbusi, we are ready to hear the story. Dumelang <laughs> Lote. That is how we say in Setswana, hello everyone and welcome aboard. As Captain Tolu has told you, I am Captain Busi and today I am taking you, Gosh. I am taking you to a time from back, back in the day when there was no electricity. Can we, can we imagine such a place? Now, this is where I will tell you a story about Mosetsa na Musidi. This means Musidi, the young girl child. Now, this is when you humble yourself and care for others so that you can work together to achieve good things. Now, let's settle down and prepare ourselves to go on the journey with Musid, the young girl child. In the village of Murutwani, there was a young girl named Musidi. Musidi was kind. She was beautiful in nature because she cared for others and listened to her elders and obeyed their teachings. Musidi did great work, committed to her chores. These were cleaning, fetching water, fetching firewood. And her parents used to boast about her all the time. Other women in the village were ashamed of Musidi. They could not stop talking about her bad, her good manners. They would talk over and over and over again, talking about how there was no other girl who had such obedience and respect like Musidi. 
There is a song about these kinds of women. It goes, Bomme bari kanche bari kanche bari kamona kamona tasa sefate hunali ke le yama hospos yach together around under a tree and they will gather around a teapot where they would always drink tea and talk about the people in the village gossiping. They packed and saw that they will remove Musidi from the village because their own parents were always shouting at them, telling them about how Musidi is good at this, how Musidi is good at that. So Leto and Taelo, two young girls, made a pact and saw that Musidi's parents will not keep her forever. One day, Leto collected all the girls in the village so that they could go and collect wood. Amongst them was Taelo and Lerato. When Musidi saw them, she committed herself and went to collect wood with them. They traveled and traveled and they arrived at the great river of Mudubu. This river was known to have a strong current. A current is when the water moves at a certain speed and how strong this water is, meaning that if you can't swim or you are not strong enough, the water can easily carry you away. So these young girls collected wood and quickly tied it up. So after they tied it up, after they tied it up, Lethoho told the girls, let's go swim. Hmm? Let's go and get the heat of our bodies. The girls ran to the river. And as they were running to the river, they took off their loincloths and left it on the sand. Now, a loincloth is a piece of... And loin cloth is makabe. Now, when the girls were swimming, Leto and Taelo took makabe amusidi. They took musa. Now the girls got out of water and ran to their loin cloths. <laughs> they were naked, so they didn't want anyone to see them. So they ran and got to their loin cloths. Musidi found hers missing. She asked the girls, where are my loincloths? And Bona, by Tela Muriti Ozididi. This means that they turned a blind eye and pretended like they knew nothing about Musidi's loincloth. Lerato saw that Taelo and Leto had something to do with this because they were looking at each other. <laughs> trying not to so show the others that they were laughing. Lerato became brave and said to them, Leto and Taelo, give Musidi her loincloth. Leto replied, Lerato, Lerato, don't irritate me. Huh? What if, what if the water took them? Don't make us angry. This means that poor Musidi cried a feeble cry where she had no strength and power to fight what was happening. She looked and searched around the river. Lerato tried to stop her, but she was naked and could not go back home naked. So she refused and looked into the water, 
hoping to find her loincloth. When Lekhoa and Tyler saw that Musiri was now far from them, they took out her loincloth from the sand. Another girl saw the loincloth and shouted, look, they are Musiri's loincloths. So the wrath of God so angry. She shouted and reprimanded them until they even got into a fist fight. Ah. And after this, there was nothing more they can do. Musidi was long gone and all they could do was carry their wood and go back home. When they got back home, they told the other villagers how Musidi has gone with the river to find her loincloth and that her loincloth only was seen after she was gone. Leratos ran to her parents and she told them what had actually happened. She explained, she explained that Leto and Tailo are the actual people who were responsible because they are the ones who hid Musidi's loincloth and that they are the ones who told her that it went with the river. The men of the village now said, we will go and find they will go and search for Musidi. Empty ended. Musidi was far gone by now. Even the big man of the village could not find her. Where she was, she was far along the river. And while she was still traveling in the river, she saw a big well and asked if it had seen her loincloth. The well replied, Ka fela pili. This means continue going forward. Musidi continued on her journey, searching for her loincloth. She came across a second well. This well also told her, Kapela Pili, which means continue going forward. Sure, just like that. Musidi continued looking for her loincloth. And after a long time searching for the loincloth, she found a large well. She asked it also if it had seen her loincloth. This well said to her, Ka pe la mu ra ho, which meant turn back. Jo, Musidi was confused. She did not know what to do. The sun was also starting to hide under the horizon of the west. It was sunset. When she looked up, she rising, rising in a line like a tornado into the sky. She felt that she would only walk across the forest so she could find where this smoke was coming from because she knew no other way of going back. found where the smoke was coming from, element out of her face. I can see that people
Looks like we're having a big problem. We are going to ask our technician. But in the meantime, we would like to find out what you heard so far. Who was your favorite character so far in the story? Tell us, friends, who was your favorite character? Mine, mine, mine is Lerato. Who was your favorite character, friends? Nongi says hers was Lerato. Why was your why was Lerato your favorite? I think I think it's because she she was brave and she told the truth. Uh. Turn back. That's what it meant. And so, a friend of ours, Ospaeleti, she did not know what to do. Hmm? The sun was already hiding on the horizon of the west. It was sunset. And when she looked up, she was deep in a wild bush. She did not know which direction home was. And deeper, deeper in the bush, she could see smoke rising in the, in the sky in a line like a tornado into the sky. She decided to go through the forest so that she could find this place where the smoke was coming from. When she arrived at that place, she found an old woman. This old woman had dinto. This means sores. This old woman had dinto. Sores on her face. These sores were growing out of her face. And out of them, there was yellow pass, maladu, maladu, and dirt, dichila, coming out. They had an awful smell. This means that you could not look at them or smell them without easily vomiting out. But Musidi was a strong girl. The old woman saw Musidi and she felt sad for her. She asked her, Mwanaka, my child, where are you coming from? Musidi explained where she was coming from and what had happened so that she had arrived where she was. The old woman looked at Musidi. Wanaka, my child, you are in the land of the giants that eat people. I do not know how I can hide you. However, if you can clean the sores of my face, I will make a plan to protect you. But if you don't want to, I will leave you for the giants to eat. Musidi Wanabat. Poor Musidi. She knelt down and started cleaning the sores that were disgusting and smelling awful from the old woman. After she finished, finished cleaning them, the old woman locked her inside a room where she kept her harvest. This is where she stored her mealy meals, her beans, and other food. And just as she locked her in, the giants came and came and they were shouting, this meant we smell a foreigner. We can smell a foreigner. So the old woman argued with them. Hey you! Are you crazy? Huh? Are you crazy? You are smelling these souls of mine. I have just cleaned them. Hmm? There's nothing here. Get out and leave. The giants 
got out and left. Lisiri, Musiri was just listening all this time. This means that she had so much great fear and was scared for her life. She didn't even breathe until she heard the giants got, go out and leave. Only then could she let out a breath. Sure. Now that Musidi and the old woman were left alone, the old woman fed Musidi a lot, a lot of delicious food. Musidi became healthy and she became fat. Her skin was bright and beautiful and she was glowing. She was very pale. It was as if the, she had never seen the light of day. After a month staying here, the old lady made Musidi a new loincloth. She also crafted for her bands, bracelets, necklaces, accessories to wear on her body, and also earrings. All of these were made with gold and diamonds. Sure. This means that all of this was glamour and glitter that was so shiny. It would definitely catch your attention. Now, after a month, the old lady talked to Mercedi. My child, I want you to go home. I have prepared everything. She gave Mercedi animal fat and a small sack. She said, my child, take this animal fat. You will run when you leave this house. And when you are running on the road, the giants will come after you. When you see them about to catch you, throw some animal fat on the ground and continue running. Do this over and over again when they try to catch you so that you can distract them. This sack will help you when you get to the river. You must find where the river is full and throw it inside of the river. The water will part for you and you can cross and go to the other side. The giants will follow you, but when they are in the middle, the water will close and cover them and take them away. When you are on the other side, you will be in your own land, your home land. Take this small bag. These are all my gifts to you. Now, this means that go on your journey, my child. May God be with you. Musidi ran out and she started running fast and fast and fast on her way. As she was running, she saw a sudden burst of dust from behind her. She did not stop. She continued running and running and running. And the dust was getting closer and closer. When she looked, it was the giants. She ran and they got closer. Just as they were about to catch her, she threw down the animal fat. The giants got distracted, fighting for the animal fat. And she began to run further and further and when they were finished they started to chase her again they ran behind her they ran behind her started to get closer as they were about to get closer again she threw the animal fat again hey these dumb giants they got distracted and fought over it she ran and ran and started to see she was getting to the river 
and she ran towards where the river was full. She got there and did not waste any time. She threw in the sack and the water opened up for her to go in. She crossed the river running. She did not look back. Just after she crossed and she looked back, the giants were already in the middle. But ha ha, the water did not waste any time. It closed in on them and carried them away. So now Musidi could walk home relaxed. She arrived home late in the afternoon and her parents were so happy and overjoyed to see her. They even called Lerato to come see her. When Lerato got there, she saw that Musidi was healthy and fat and she was wearing bright shiny things that shined like the stars at night. Yo, the women in the village again were ashamed because now Musidi had treasures. They told all the girls that you must go. You must go and go fetch the treasures Musidi has found. Sure. The girls, the girls left the village. Lerato was also with them. They started where they hid Musidi's loincloth and continued alongside the river. But as they were walking, something weird happened where Lerato saw a bundle of yellow grapes from a tree all alone. She went to them and picked them up. Inside of them came out a bee. How? What is happening? That bee told Lerato, Lerato, go back home. Musidi loves you, and she is crying for you. Lerato dropped her head. She held her chin, shaked her head from side to side. Pelu ya racharu, amenuga, abuela mora. Her heart was suddenly filled with fear, and she got so nervous. She turned back and returned home. The other girls laughed at her. <laughs> they said, yo, she's a coward. They were only thinking about the treasures they were going to get. Lerato did not care. She went home and passed by Musidi's home so that she can tell her about the weird things she saw on the road. And also, what made her change her mind into coming back home? The other girls continued until they found the old woman with the disgusting things on her face. They got there and the woman told them about how this was the land that lived giants that eat people. She then said to them, My children, if you lick, yes, she said lick this time, if you lick these sores of my face, I will protect you. If you don't, you will never see your parents again. But you know Leto was there. She replied. Huh? Hey, this means, what is this old woman saying, huh? This little old woman. She thinks that we are going to lick and eat her when she's so rotten like this. Girls, let's go back home. Hmm? This thing is crazy. Huh? The old woman left them. And after a while, while they were walking in the bushes, the giants came and took all of them and swallowed them up whole. They were now living in the stomachs of the giants. Their parents at home waited and looked for them until their necks were sore and painful. Their children were not coming back home. They were deep inside the stomachs of the giants. Lerato was saved 
by the love of Musidi. You see, Musidi's love, care, kindness, and humility helped her to survive in the wild bush of giants. Her humility helped her to help the old woman who in return saved her from the giants, whereas Leclo and her friends did not have kindness, and so nature also repaid their unkindness with unkindness. Nature repaid their bad doings with badness. And that is the story of Mosetsana Musidi. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed the story of Mosetsana Musidi. The song I sang is about women who like to sit under a tree to drink a cup of tea so that they could gossip and talk about others. And I will sing it for you for the last time. Bomme bare kantle bare kantle bare kamona kamona ta sa se fate hunali ketele yama boso boso yang titi mola diti rota musadi e kakopa na ma e lingko no ma e ma boso boso e Thank you again, everyone, and bye bye. Bye, Ospussy. Bye bye. Bye, Ospussy, and thank you for your wonderful story. Everyone, how did you like that? I loved it very, very much. I want to read the comments and see what our friends were saying. All right, friends. I see we have Anna all the way from Brazil. Hi, Anna. Thank you for joining us. Shoo, Brazil. Isn't that on the other side of the world? Yes, Brazil is also on the other side of the world. Thank you for coming to watch us. Yes, and look, she says, she says she likes the old lady because the old lady was clever and kind. I like the old lady too, friends. She was very clever. Who else was very clever in our story? I see someone saying Musidi was her favorite character. Yes, I still like Lerato because Lerato was brave. And what about the other girls? What do you think about Letoyo? I see someone talking about another story. Ha, huh. John is telling us that they have a story in their community called Brothers at War. And that's a myth explaining the origin of Luo, which is one brother who goes to search for a spear and meets a granny with the same pus and the same swords. Well, hopefully John can share that story with us another time. I would really, really love to hear it. Let me just fix your head, Nongi. Ooh, Bayeleti is asking, why do these gogos have all these ugly sores? I also want to know. I think it's a bit gross. Yeah, and asking people to touch them. Shoo, yuck. Yeah, but it saved Musidi, didn't it? Yes, yes, sure. Her friendship, her friendship with, with Gogo really saved her in the end. Yes, friends. And I want to know, who got into trouble? Who did not make nice friends with our granny? I, I think it was Lecoyo. She's the one who's been the mastermind behind all the nasty tricks. You see, friends, it doesn't really help to be rude with our friends and to be rude with people who are trying to help us, is it? Nope. I think we should continue being nice and continue helping others so that others will help us with an open heart. Yes, friends, continue to help others so that others may help you as well. Don't be rude like Letoyo and friends. Be nice like Musidi and be nice like Lerato. Yes, and please also join us tomorrow. Tomorrow we have another special storyteller called Ospailetti. 
she's one of my favorite. <laughs> she's always nice to me. Yes. Tomorrow we have Oz Bayeleti and Obuti Tembile to give us another wonderful story called The Calabash Kids. Yes. And hopefully they'll explain to you tomorrow what a calabash is. Yo, you can do so many interesting things with a calabash. You can eat out of it. You can make instruments. You can do all sorts of things. Ospaelezi, please tell them tomorrow all the stuff they can do. Yes, friends, please join us tomorrow. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much for listening to our story today. Now, can we say goodbye with our song? Yes, please, 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 please. And then tomorrow we'll put it in the comments and then you can read the lyrics and try to sing with us. Okay, friends? Okay, friends. Count us down, Nongi. A one, a two, a one, two, three, and Banaba Africa, Banaba Africa, Kangli Uteng, Kangli Uteng, Treniki Oyaka, Treniki Oyaka, it's very deep. Bale, bale te monate, banaba afrika, banaba afrika, kangli uten, kangli uten, treniki yoyaka, treniki yoyaka, it's very di bale, di bale ta afrika, choo choo, choo choo. Join us again tomorrow on the story train, friends. Bye-bye. Bye, friends. Bye, friends.